We've been in the car for three hours outside of Los Angeles, and we're just about to roll into the last free place in America, Slab City. In particular, East Jesus, the artistic community within Slab City, which is basically a giant squatters community. It was super hard to communicate with these guys because they're so off the grid. So I hope they know that we're coming today and don't try to shoot us off their land. I'm Yunge. Aaron. Aaron, Good nice to meet you. you. Wow, this place is awesome. Hi. Hey. Yunge? Yes. Jen. Jen, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're sitting here with Jen. She is a resident of East Jesus and also their curator. She gets together all of the beautiful pieces that you see here. Jen, how long have you been staying here? I've been living in East Jesus for about a year and a half. And I first came out as a weekend contributor a year before that. How many people are staying in East Jesus right now? Right now in the summer, we have six full-time residents who live here all week. Mm -hmm. And then we have four who are only here on the weekends. Can you explain to me the distinction between East Jesus and Slab City? Slab City has been around since about the 80s, mm -hmm. and people come out here to mostly do what they want to do and be left alone. Right. Well, East Jesus is actually in Slab City. Okay. Uh, we are considered a camp. Charlie Russell is the founder of East Jesus, and mm -hmm. he first came out here in 06 to work on Salvation Mountain, and he fell in love with the place, packed all his belongings into a shipping container and had his shipping container and his two art cars shipped down here mm -hmm. to the furthest, worst corner of the slabs and started East Jesus. There's always been a lot of art out here. Mm -hmm. There's multiple artist communities within the slabs. East Jesus is different because of the scale and simply just how many people are a part of East Jesus. In a busy week, we'll get a thousand people coming through for tours. What happens if there's a disagreement? In the eyes of the law, none of us actually belong here. Uh, in the event that, they, that a crime is committed, mm -hmm. the sheriffs will come out and they will arrest people. And they do a really good job of it. Show us the way. We've got our barbecue over here. This was a 1971 Mercedes Benz. A barbecue? Yeah, according to Charlie, this was the biggest lemon they ever produced. So when someone brought it out to him to use as an art car, he said, no, we're just going to set it on fire. Right over here, this is our mammoth. Awesome. It's a 13 foot high woolly mammoth built out of blown out car tires. This is, Whoa. this is the Tower of Barbarella. This is originally built by Royce Carlson, who was a friend of Charlie's from the beginning. He actually helped him start East Jesus. Like he helped him clean up a lot of this. Right. He built the tower and then it's become a collaborative art piece. These panels are from our art slam competition where we give them a panel of wood and mm -hmm. give them an hour and say, okay, make art. And you get things like this. Which is the most popular art piece, if you can call it that? You know what? I'm going to say it, this one right here, because so many people use it. There's so many pictures of the TV wall. My, my good friend Flip Cassidy was the person who brought me out here the first time we actually brought the initial 15 TVs. I guess this is kind of like the anti-us project. Maybe. Media it's versus a, you. Yeah, you know, not all media is bad. Tits. Playboy. This is our Thunderdome, one of our gardens. What grows in here? We've got eggplants, onions, squash, zucchini, tomatoes, beets, and radishes. It's been a big process getting the gardens going properly because it is a harsh environment out here. Right. Because we're very aware of how far we are from any kind of services. That's, right. that's, that's essentially what the name East Jesus is. East Jesus is a colloquialism that just means out middle of nowhere. The joke I always hear is Charlie said, but fuck nowhere didn't look good on a business card. So there's no religious connotation not, behind it? Not at all. We're open to any, any religions. Do you use actual toilets to go to the bathroom here? We do. Actual toilets is a very loose term. Ass with care. This is your sewage, sewage center? It's part of our composting system. Mm -hmm. You go in there, you do your business, you cover it with peat moss. Peat moss. Ooh, it's like dirt. You always make sure it's covered with peat moss. Because oh. that kills the smell. So when this bucket in here gets full, mm. the bucket gets put into our compost, and that's how we're growing all of the food. 
It's comp. That's fertilized with human shit. Yes. I heard you have Wi-Fi. We do. How do you get power? Solar panels. This is wow. what powers East Jesus. We're using our natural resources out here, which is the sun and garbage. So all of these solar panels out here power this entire area? Yeah, and it's something we're still trying to expand upon. It was one of Charlie's wishes that a foundation be created to keep East Jesus running. The Chasters Foundation? Yes. So the Chasters Foundation has put in a bid to buy the land. I find it very interesting because it raises this whole question, you know, East Jesus exists to escape modern bureaucracy and hierarchies. But by purchasing the land, you guys would kind of be moving back towards that, kind of moving away from anarchy or free living or however one might describe it. How do you feel about that? East Jesus' primary mission is to preserve, protect, and continue the work of Charles Russell. Any ideology beyond that isn't the goal of this foundation. Our goal is to share his vision of a world without waste in which every action is an opportunity for self-expression. I guess, what's one of the biggest misconceptions that people have about East Jesus? I think a lot of people don't realize yet that we are a 501c3, mm -hmm. that we do actually exist as an entity. Mm -hmm. Right. We're currently fundraising. We have to raise about $90,000, we think. There's a gold rush right now for geothermal energy and solar energy in this area. Once the bid is put in, it can't be overturned, which means that by the time we find out somebody's got a lease, we won't know till the bulldozers show up. Okay. And we're not waiting. It's easy to see why they call this place the last free place in America. Not just in terms of the rent being free and cost of living, but the things that you can do. Like there are no rules. You can make art, put it anywhere. If you want to sleep somewhere, you can sleep there. If you want to make something, just make it and put it somewhere. This is, I don't know if you guys have been to Burning Man, but it feels like what Burning Man is, but it's here year round. There's really no boundaries beyond the regular, what's that? What is that? The air raid siren is our dinner bell. Do you know what's for dinner? Garlic sauteed bok choy. Ooh. Quiche with uh, garden vegetables and bacon. Broccoli cheese rice. Ham with homemade cranberry chutney. This meal here costs about $1.50 to $2 a person. That's always the price point that we're going for, is between $1 and $2 a person. Some people will respond well to being in an ordered society. Other people will respond a whole lot better if you just say, go at it. What brought you out here in the first place? The freedom and the ability to control your interaction with society. Can I ask what you did back in society? I've run restaurants that do over a, a million dollars in sales a year. Wow. Um, it's a very stressful business. I've been coming out here since 2005. I met Charlie when he first showed up out here. It sounds like you're one of the few people here who actually knew Charlie and had a relationship with him. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> How do you feel about the potential purchase of the land by the Chasters Foundation? Charlie had goals and aspirations for this place. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, at the time, seemed very far-fetched. When I look at it now and see how things have fallen together and progressed exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, I think Charlie would be just as amazed as mother and his sister were when they came out here mm -hmm. and saw all the work that had been done since he had passed away. The night is still young and Jen and the guys have another activity waiting for us. We're gonna go in the art car and drive ourselves to the hot springs. Over 100 degrees and perfect for this time of night. Definitely putting this on Instagram. <laughs> for you guys personally, after living in East Jesus for a year and a half, could you see yourselves going back to the rest of the society? God, I hope not. Yeah. No. I mean, it's going to be an eventuality for me eventually. I'm 
you know, I, I do have a degenerative condition. I will get to the point where I can't live out here anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be really, really awful. But mm -hmm. for now, I'm just grateful that I have the ability to spend the mobility and the good years I have left here. Even after going into the hot springs butt naked, I'm surprised to see how normal it all feels. Except now I smell like farts. This is where I spent the night, a half-buried bus from the 1950s. This was my roommate, Earl. It was a little creepy, but didn't do anything too weird. See you next time, Earl. We came out here thinking that East Jesus is nothing more than a community of squatters who just want to live here for free. What we realize, though, is that they're artists, above all, who want to carry out the vision of one man, even if that means that they have to buy the land themselves and live legally. I'm Yunch Kim with Playboy. We're in Venice Beach at the Go Topless Parade, which is basically this movement to support women's rights to be topless wherever men can be topless. That could be anywhere from in your backyard, your front yard, you're in your car, on the to beach. Venice Beach. To Venice Beach. How many of you men out there are brave enough to put a nipple pasty on or wear a bikini top and actually feel what it feels like to have to cover up? Because totally. actually it's very natural to be topless. We must our freedoms mutual, but this is constitutional.